Mary, my Kate, waits my Cindy and my Sue with a love they've been saving for me. My name's Alexander Scorby. This is the recording control room of the United States Army Band Rehearsal Hall at Fort Myer, Virginia. Today, through the cameras of the big picture television program, I shall be your guide to a unique musical organization which plays an important part in our country's military, national, and cultural life. The United States Army presents The Big Picture, an official report produced for the armed forces and the American people. During the First World War, General Pershing was impressed by the large, elaborate military bands which the French could muster for almost any occasion. Perhaps a bit self-conscious about our own smaller American bands, General Pershing decided to do something about it. He organized several of our military band units into one large musical group, and so established the first official United States Army Band in 1922. <laughs> The organization has come a long way since General Pershing's day. From their first formal assignment at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier of World War I, to their present busy schedule of official appearances, concerts, and recording performances. The band is composed of approximately 120 men. The chorus, added to the band in 1956, is made up of 40 voices. These are all soldiers in the United States Army. Though their primary assignment is to provide music, they maintain formal military standards. And the army was the Leader and commanding officer of the band is Colonel Hugh Curry. First assistant leader of the band and director of the chorus, Major Samuel Laboda. So much for the facts and figures. Now, as I've indicated, the activities of the United States Army Band are many and varied. One of the most important functions of any military musical organization is to keep alive the great traditions of its nation. The United States Army Band and Chorus now recreate in music and song some of those high moments in our history. launched, steered through its early storms. Millions for defense, but not one cent for tribute. We have met the enemy, and they are ours. And the star-spangled banner, O oh, long may it wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. The land was immense, mountain and plain and plateau and desert and mountain again, 
before the sea lapped at America's Pacific shore. To open the land, to show the way in the mid-19th century, came the horsemen of the United States Army Cavalry. No army unit in our history blazed a more colorful trail across America than the United States 7th Cavalry, which had an appointment with history at a place called the Little Bighorn. Now the United States Army Chorus sings Sergeant Flynn, a legend of Custer's last stand. nostalgic of all war songs in our history came out of the Civil War. Popular alike with people of the Union and the Confederacy, this one gave voice to the conflict-weary hopes of those who waited at home. When Johnny marching home again, hurrah, hurrah, he'll give him a hearty welcome then, hurrah, hurrah, for the men will say the boys will shout the lady. century brought a fresh tempo to the music of America. 
a rhythm which swept also through the army with a jauntiness which symbolized our, our spirited entry into the new era. But the old tunes still held a fond spot in the soldier's heart. Seven long years I courted Nancy by all the rolling river. For seven long years I courted Nancy. Oh, yes, oh, I found a way for the wide Missouri. I'm drinking a rum and trying tobacco. I'm drinking a rum and John tobacco. I'm bound to wait to the white Missouri. Stand up, stand up, attention, you red leg mountaineers. You got in your back and your box of tech on mountain cannoneers. World War I. Never in our history had so many of our men gone so far to protect our homeland. For music to encourage and comfort the soldiers of the AEF, America dug deep into its sentimental heart. The music of George M. Cohan, the doughboy of World War I, faded into a funny-looking hat and uniform, stowed away in an attic trunk. Within two decades, G.I. Joe appeared on the scene. Perhaps he was a, a cheekier lad than his father had been, but the spirit he carried into battle with him was pretty much the same. Only now, Mademoiselle from Armentier had become a pert little lass called Lily Marlene.
Arms are up, the chests are up, the arms are swinging and cadence count. Sound off. One, two, sound off. Three, four. Cadence count. One, two, three, four. United States Army Band becomes a depository of our rich American heritage, a source of inspiration for present and future generations. However, no musical organization worthy of the name is fulfilling its entire duty if it limits itself only to works of the past. It must also present the music of its own day. Here then is the overture to the comic operetta Candide. Among its many assignments, the band lends color and dignity to military ceremonials, such as this review at Fort Myer.
In every presidential inaugural parade, the band sets the mood for the occasion. These men of music play their part in welcoming foreign dignitaries to the United States. In addition to their official musical assignments, the United States Army Band also gives public concerts at many of Washington's parks and historic shrines. Malice toward none, charity for all, with firmness in the right as God gives us to see the right, let us finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle, and for his widow and his orphans, to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations.